Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's part 69 today and we are back a game earlier than we'd planned. We've got Watford away in the Premier League, followed by the big one. The Carabao Cup quarter-final against West Brom. They're directly below us in the league. They're the side chasing us in Europe. And they're the side trying to stop our run towards a trophy as well. We've not got close to winning one in England yet. And we'd absolutely love to do that this season. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can get a little bit closer. Please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long term stories. And you can catch up with all the playlists and the podcast channel up in the eye above. But let's talk about quickly why we've come back a game early. Partly because we had some great battles with Watford when we were derby manager in the championship. But more importantly, we've got to balance sort of risk and reward here. We're having a few injury troubles we have throughout the season. You can see there we've got a long-term one to the one position we don't have a backup. We've also got another big one in central midfield. We've got a couple of players just coming back. So with three games in six days, with the Europa League game three days ago, this one, and then West Brom... We've really got to balance the workload and prioritise the right competitions. We're essentially in the Premier League. If we can keep picking up consistent results against the teams below us, we are in a league of our own. We're not going to get anywhere near the top six, which Everton have broken into this year. And we're not going to have any threat from below us because West Brom, we managed to get a result against last time. Burnley, who are below them, we beat 6-0 recently. And Tottenham are having an awful season. So are Wolves, who would have been competing last year. So I feel like this is a really important opportunity for us to stay comfortably in seventh, but also to try and push for a trophy. We've got a friendly tie in the third round of the FA Cup against Port Vale, so that one should be a home banker. But for now, before the January window opens, let's go and have a look at the schedule. I will say the one thing that does worry me about January, we had our pre-recruitment meeting a few weeks ago. Didn't even mention getting a right back. And Carl Walker-Peters is injured. We don't have one at the club. It's astonishing. But let's have a look at the results on the pitch, which haven't been too bad in truth. Obviously, you were with me as we beat Spurs after that disappointing night in Rome, but we did unfortunately have a poor result next time out. It was a 2-1 defeat at home to Manchester United, and Mason Greenwood's second goal pretty much wrapped it up. David De Gea gave us a sniff by getting an own goal a few minutes later, but it wasn't enough. We never really got back into it, and Manchester United were comfortable winners. We haven't quite got that same quality. Against Rapid Vienna though, we did win 2-0, a comfortable win in the Europa League. That wrapped up qualification and it was deservedly so, despite being two late goals from Durami and Ward-Prowse. We dominated the game, we were the better side and eventually we took our chances. Adam Brown, another one who picked up an injury in that game and given the one to Walker Peters after, has actually been quite costly. Our home to Chelsea, we did sneak a one all draw thanks to Neri Campace in the 88th minute. We went all out with five to go. We just got a lucky break. We made the most of it and we clung on too. A 6-0 victory away at Burnley came out of nowhere that one. Another hat-trick for Baratinia, the revelation from the Tottenham game. Seems like the odd away game is absolutely brilliant. Volkov, Saravakos back from injury and Gosling off the bench with one apiece too. A 0-0 draw, perhaps a bit disappointing at home to lead straight after. But again, with games coming thick and fast three days apart, we've not quite got that squad to compete. And if we are able to play our first team, avoid the injuries like we did last year, and also be able to get a goal scorer, we'd probably be alright. But in this occasion, didn't work out. A 4-0 win was sealed at home to Greek side of Tromitos though. Stark, Gosling and a Figueredo brace off the bench. That got us through as group winners ahead of Roma. And of course, we'll continue to boost our coefficient, which will be big for future years. No real sign of us being linked with any jobs yet, or any threat of a job in the future. So let's go and have a quick look at what's available before we get into today's two games. So you can see there are Premier League jobs available. There's one in the Bundesliga, there's one in France, but they're not the massive clubs. There's none of the big hitters in La Liga, in Syria. There's none of that going about in the Bundesliga. So for now, we're just staying put and we're quite enjoying this Southampton team. We're just not quite as consistent as we like to be and we have got limitations. We haven't got a right back at the moment. We haven't got a natural goal scorer. And we just have to accept those things and try and get results. Now, today we come up against Hakon Evgen, who almost wrapped us up fourth place last year with that late goal against City. He was then sold on by the director of football in the summer. But if I put the 11 out here, you can see where the problems come. Almost all of the 11, excluding the goalkeeper, have got a heavy match load. On the bench, they've all got pretty much heavy or medium. And the ones that aren't on the bench are either injured or coming back from injury, with the exception of Gosling, who played on Thursday night. 
So we haven't got a huge amount of options in the squad. I have had to promote a few to the first team, but some of them aren't eligible for the league squad. So we're in a little bit of a pickle. We're going to have to be careful with the way we manage players. And we just have to hope that they can get through these two games and then make the most of the 11-day break. But I do worry with some of these players that perhaps it will be a game too far when we get to the cup quarter final. Maybe we'll just rotate a bit more. But the 11 we've decided to go for today is Volta Luiz in goal. No choice with the fullbacks as Adaramola and Bernardo are the only two fit. So two left backs playing on either side. Saravakos and Junior the centre halves. We have got a full complement there. Ward Prowse and Haidara in the middle because of the major injury. Perez, Figueredo, Campes the attack in midfield three. And Baratinha continues up front. Lots of quality in the squad. Some very good players there. So can we get a result at Watford? Generally, we've been far better on the road away this season. And actually, it's where most of our great performances have come. So can we add another one today? Let's go and find out. Just the 10 changes from the Europa League game. And it's a very established Watford side. Ignore Slavon Bilic in charge. They've got the likes of Emil Smith-Rowe, Hakan Evgen, who we know well from last season, Ross McCrory, who we tried to sign for eons in the Dundee United live stream save, Stefan in goal, the backup city keeper, Harry Winks in the middle, Kiros at the back. It's a good football team. And they've got a few of the old sort of championship guard on the bench from other clubs and their own. So Max O'Leary and Connor Coventry to name a couple. It's a good squad, it's a good side, but let's be honest, at our best, we're better than Watford. It's just whether we can be at our best every three days. We're about to find out in this one. I'm just hoping we can have a game like Burnley, and then after an hour, at least rest three of the boys. As McCrory plays out from the back to Kirosh, into Harry Winks, out to Torre on the right wing. They've got an overlap from Pedro Porro, and we've been caught out of position early here. Oh, it's just wide from Colley. No real pressure on him from Bernardo, who, to be fair, is not a natural right back. But it could have been an early lead for the host. The Hornets on top, and we need to get back into this quick. Well, it's been a very Southampton first half since the first two minutes. No highlights. Nice and steady, nice and tight, not many shots. And now, a chance from a set piece. Though Figueredo gives it away, and the long clearance downfield is intercepted well by Saravacos. Bernardo plays in Luis Jr., the two youngsters, now Saravakos back from injury, just starting to form a partnership. Oh, McCrory! If we were thinking about signing him in a live stream save, that's enough to put you off. A misplaced lazy back pass and Baratinia's poaching. He has been a revelation up there. Loads of goals and more importantly, great hold-up play, great assists, running down lost causes and winning set pieces. And he's nicked another one there. A poacher's instinct and we lead at Watford, though Evgen's got it in the midfield. He's looking to get back at his former club, plays it into Harry Winks. And to be fair, after the way he finished last season, if I were Evgen, I'd be annoyed the director of football sold me. But Bernardo intercepts the cross there, plays a 1-2 with Perez. Can we hit them on the counter? Long towards Baratinha, chasing down McCrory. He played his back pass with plenty of power that time. Not making the same mistake twice. Though the keeper's clearance only finds Neri Campes. 1-2 with Haidara, up to Figueredo. Shoots from 25 yards. Bit straight at the keeper. Wasn't the greatest strike. And it remains 1-0. But we're just starting to get a foothold here. Though it's a Watford corner as I say that. Into the front post. Collie flicks it on. It hits the crossbar. And we're lucky to survive. Five minutes to half time. Pedro Porro with a free kick. Here's Kirosh to Porro again. Through to Wilkin. Volta Luiz is there. Excellent anticipation from the keeper. Just surged off his line to get there in time. Long ball forward, flicked on by Campes. Figueredo's got it. 30 yards out. Tries to slide it through to Baratinha. Harry Winks reads the game well. Back to Kirosh at centre half. Chips it forward towards Wilkin. Hoof forward by Junior. But Porro intercepts. It's become a crazy game now. Porro gets in. Campes wins the challenge. Teo hoofs it downfield. McCrory funders it back to his keeper after his earlier error. The clearance is only as far as Perez. Why are we seeing this pinball in the middle of the pitch? It's got to lead to something. Manoz with the long ball. That might be it. Wilkin rounds the keeper. And I think, I think VAR is going to save us. I hope it does. Because if I've watched two minutes to see that awful goal conceded, I will not be happy. But there's no need to be. It's disallowed for offside. We're hanging on. It's 1-0 to Southampton. Well, after that incredibly long highlight, we just get our chance to catch our breath before half-time. We're going to tell the lads to do it for the fans. Keep going, keep giving their best. And to be fair, when we're in this sort of form, when we've got these players out injured, if we can just keep grabbing 1-0 wins, I'm a happy man. We had a little spell of it back in October. 
and we perhaps need another one now. No European hangover this time, we hope, as Ward-Prowse gives it to Campes. Back into Ward-Prowse again. Club legend downfield, Figueredo, that's a wonderful turn. Beats the sliding challenge. And the finish just isn't quite there. Stefan tips it round the post and it's a corner kick. Ward-Prowse delivers it. Kiros heads away and Torre's going to get there first. It's a two-on-one, but there's plenty of men streaming forward. What for the throwing men at the counter-attack? They're going for the sliding challenge. He's lost out there. I think it was Haidara trying to get back. He goes back to Minos though, so he did his job. He forced the player backwards. Excellent work. Right, just over a quarter of the game to go. I think it's time for a few changes. So Ward Prowse is going to be replaced by Ian Gilligan. No, sorry, Haidara is going to be replaced. Ian Gilligan is going to go into central midfield. We'll switch him to the Mazala. And we'll have Ward Prowse as the playmaker, where he suits that role quite well. Teo's having a poor game at left back, but I just can't switch him. I've got nobody who can go in there. I did play Fersler at left back in the Europa League game, but it wasn't convincing. Volkov's going to come on for Perez on the right. Campes will be replaced by Fersler on the left. And it just becomes about clinging on. Those quick bodies on the counter-attack on the wings. A little bit of trickery could nick us a second. And hopefully clinging on at the back with fresh legs. Let's see if it's enough. Well, a very helpful result elsewhere as Wolves seem to have taken a lead against Burnley late on. Last season, that would have been a disaster. But that means that everyone's 10 points behind us now. And although we're not going to catch the top six, I would happily sit in a league of my own in seventh and focus on the cups. So we've got three minutes of stoppage time. You all know the drill by now. I'm going to go and chuck all the time wasting on. Lots of tactical changes and three minutes of stoppage time to hang on. And the last thing I wanted to see, quite frankly, was a highlight. Even though we're the ones with the ball at the moment. Gilligan in the middle. Oh, he's found Volkov. That's a great ball. Into Baratinia. And why was I worried? We have got the luckiest ever find up front. I mentioned it in the last episode. It's Antonio at West Ham. It's Bale in his first spell at Tottenham. Throwing a player into an unknown position further up the pitch and getting luck where your other players have failed. And Baratinha has been an absolute revelation. He's a wonderful player and he's proving his best. As Evshen finds Collie. Oh, nearly one back for Watford. Considering we've gone defensive and time wasting, I did not expect to score a goal and then have our opposition hit the woodwork in three minutes of stoppage time. But as it is, we win 2-0 at Watford. We can focus on the Carabao Cup quarter final now. But that's another excellent result and essentially almost wraps up 7th place this early in the season. Exactly what we wanted, we stay best of the rest. We'll be back in a minute for the big game as we face West Brom in a quarter final of the Cup. We're back for West Brom then. Let's have a look at the fitness test. Adam Brown is not back. Young Tommy Russell, who had been promoted to the first team as basically our right back, is available if we need him. But we're not going to start him in this one, I don't think. Let's see how many of the boys from the last game are fit. They're all okay, but the match load is really starting to wear on some of them. So I feel like we might have to make a couple of changes. So from the last game, I'm going to take Campes out for Fersler. Wonder kid for Wonder kid. Shouldn't make a difference. Same on the right with Perez for Volkov. Not that he's much fitter. I'm tempted to bring in a bit of experience at the back, but I don't know that that's going to help. But I will replace Bednarek with Russell on the bench, just so we've got a fullback. Bednarek has got less and less comfortable playing there as he's got older. And he's not really got the attacking attributes either. Aside from that though, there's not really much scope for manoeuvre without really harming the team and the quality. I think given Gilligan's performance in the last game, we might have to put Gosling on the bench. But then does that benefit us? I'm not sure. No, I'm going to leave it. This is the lineup. This is the squad. We've replaced the two wingers. We've left everything else the same. It's West Brom away in the Carabao Cup quarter final. And I need one more big 90 minutes out of these boys before we get an 11 day break. Can they get through to the semis? There's already the likes of United and Chelsea there. Let's go and see if we can join them and get amongst the elite boys. Well, rather unusually, I don't recognize a huge number of players in this team. Rakeem Harper's the only original, I think. They've still got John Joe Kenny, who was obviously at Evan at the start of the game. They've got the likes of Amione at center half. He was at Marseille, I think, in our other series when we came up against them with Banger. And then Nabil Fakir is still going well as well. He's a good footballer. Some good players on the bench, including Wilson Esbrand, who we had on loan as our backup left back at Hibs a few years ago. So one reunion there, but let's be honest, again, if we're at our best, we've got the better side. It's just about whether we turn up on a day and whether these lads have got another 90 in them. I just don't know at this short notice. So let's just go and find out. There's no point delaying the inevitable. Can we put in a big display or will it be West Brom's day? Let's go and see. 
Classic Southampton-esque as we're back in the 28th minute, having seen no highlights, there's only been one shot in the whole game, and here we are on a break with Figueredo. Beats one man in midfield. He doesn't look tired there, does he? Switches it right, Volkov keeps it in. Excellent from the Ukrainian. Back to Bernardo, the right back. Tries to beat his man, but it's intercepted. And that's the problem, because he's left-footed, because he's cutting inside every time, it's predictable. Ralph gets in at the other end, Volta Louise saves the day. But we're really missing having fullbacks. Why did they loan out Daniel Amati on deadline day? The backup right back, he was a very small wage in the squad as the keeper makes another blinding stop from point blank range with the head. And it's back to the edge of the box. It's the one deal out of all of them I don't get. Falwell was massive money. Other players have been replaced. But Amati, he was doing no harm. He was just sitting on the bench and doing a job for us. And he would have been key now as Ward Prowse puts the corner in. We're yet to have a shot at all in this game, let alone on target. As Figueredo gets it left side of the box. Right side for us, sorry. Goes for the shot. Tried to catch the keeper out. It was a decent effort, but it wasn't really troubling him. And it remains nil-nil. It's been a poor game, but so often we're nil-nil at half time. And normally it's a pretty good sign. So let's go and see if it is this time. We'll talk to the boys about what's been a pretty even and poor half. We'll pump the fist, we'll tell them to prove a point, and we've got most of them motivated. A big second half in this cup quarter final, and a real chance to get one step closer to Wembley. Stephen Bamford in the middle, finds Ralph up front for West Brom. He's got four or five to run at, but he's still got support, and he's still got time. He's not really getting pressed. Goes back into Josemir, the left back, to Bamford, to Ralph, to Jasper, and it's in. But, have we got VAR? Have we got a check here? Because the fact that it's not just come up with goal given, we're going to the VAR, it is called back for an offside, and for the second game in a row, our blushes have been spared by video technology. Right, we've got 25 minutes to go, we've got to think about fatigue, and we've got to think about quality. So, Figueredo's knackered, Volkov's had a poor game, he's going to go into the number 10. On the right, we'll have Fran Perez. I don't want to take off Baratinia because he's just too important at this stage. Ward-Prowse hasn't had the best game, but he's experienced. Is that enough, though? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to make a second change just yet, because this game could go all the way. As we've got a throw on the left with Teo, just about the halfway line. Plays a 1-2 with Fursler. He's got him running off him, but he's got space to run into. Finds Fursler by the byline. Can he cut it back? He does to Teo. Edge of the box. We just need to get the cross in. Ward-Prowse is there. Does just that. Fran Perez is up. Oh, he's offside. I was about to say he's missed a sit-up, but it didn't matter in the end. Because otherwise, he would have really regretted missing that. Let's go and make the other changes. Fursler and Campes will swap back. And we will also take off Ward-Prowse for young Ian Gilligan. And I don't know whether to swap the duties. I don't think we will this time. Hydara's having a good game. We just need one moment of magic. Who's going to produce it? Two minutes of stoppage time. It's not coming, is it? We are going straight to penalties, I think. Or are we? Second minute of stoppage time. Corner for Baratinha. Headed away by Brown. Volkov will get there first. Can we get that ball in the box once more? Gilligan's got it. The whistle's going to go, surely. It's over to the left to Campes. Oh, he's giving it away. Not like this. Bamford surging downfield. It's a two-on-two. -two. Ralph picks it up. Blow the whistle, ref. What was I talking about extending the game? Gots out to John Joe Kenny. Please don't do it. John Joe Kenny into the box. He's got no pressure on him. It's into Josh Ralph. And in the third minute of two added on, the legs have gone and we have been cost the game. All four of the back four absolutely shattered. Why we were still playing, I'm not quite sure. There were no delays prior to that in stoppage time. So the referee's got a lot to answer for, but it was just one game too far. We're out of the Carabao Cup at the quarterfinal stage. And now with seventh basically wrapped up in the Premier League, it becomes, can we compete in Europa League? Probably too hard this season. Or the FA Cup. We're going to need a lucky draw. But that's all to reflect on in the future. Let's go and skip ahead to the schedule. And we'll see when we'll next be back. Well, disappointment in the Carabao Cup. But overall, a much-earned 11-day break. The problem is, that's followed by three games in six days again. So it's going to be very hard to keep up at this point. I think what we're going to do now, because Europe's going to be the main focus once it's back, is we'll come back around the end of January... Of course, if we get a brilliant fourth round FA Cup tie, we'll come back slightly earlier for that. But if not, it will be Brighton or Sheffield United and transfer deadline day. I'm thinking Brighton because they sort of beat us last time, didn't they? They made us look silly despite being bottom of the league. And they're still fighting for everything again down there. So one of those two games and your transfer window closing is going to be the key. But we've got a quick bit of news before we go from our youth intake preview. 
And that is some very good news for Southampton Football Club. Because look, we should be really optimistic about this group of young players. I'm very optimistic. Now give me a superstar. We've had them nearly every year and the club seems to have even before we came here. So I'm hoping that there'll be another lot of gems there and we'll be able to bolster the squad naturally, even if our director of football doesn't. But we're going to be back at the end of January. Hopefully we'll still be comfortably in seventh place and maybe we'll have got a knife draw in the Europa League too. We'll wait and see. If you want to find out and you did enjoy this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content from two long-term stories. You can catch up with all the playlists, including the live stream series and the football podcast channel in the eye above. And a massive thank you as always for your incredible support. But I hope you're still enjoying it as much as I am. I know it was disappointment at the end, but that's what makes it great. Those near misses and those dramatic failures are the things that keep driving us. So I hope to see you next time as we get closer to the return of European football. Fingers crossed we'll have some good transfer work as well. I'll see you there. (laughs) 